We all know the importance of tire pressure, don't we? Too high and you compromise grip and traction, while too low, you run the risk of a puncture and the tire squirming around on the rim. But how do you check your tire pressure? Do you simply use your thumbs and press the tire and go with feel and guesswork? What if there's an easier way, a more precise way using your smartphone? Well, today there is. As Tubalito, the company best known for its distinctive orange inner tubes, launched potentially an innovation in measuring your tire pressure. So this is a brand new p Sense inner tube, the company's latest technology, and that's a funny name, isn't it? Which uses an NFC near field communication chip inside the inner tube, which lets you via your smartphone get real time pressure data from your tire. So that is pretty cool, but let's take a closer look and see how it works. So the company, as you know, makes these famous orange inner tubes. And what they've done is put an NFC chip right inside the inner tube, just here where the foul stem is inside a foam padding to protect it. Not really much to see. Doesn't add much weight on a scale as compared to a normal inner tube from Tubalito. So that's the inner tube. And here it is fitted to a wheel. So that's the orange stem, dead giveaway. All you do is fire up the company's smartphone app available on Android and Apple. Simply hit scan, tap it on the tire, and hey presto, it gives you the tire pressure in bar and PSI. So it really is that simple. Now, I've been trying it all morning and using a Silka digital track pump to test the accuracy of the inner tube. And when I first started using it and hit a scan, it was under reading compared to that track pump by about four or five PSI. Then after the fourth or fifth scan, it seemed to update. And from then onwards, it gave me accurate and consistent uh, readings compared to that track pump. Whether it's 30 or 20 or 25, the readings were fairly consistent, although about one PSI below the Silco track pump, probably within the margins of error quoted by the company for the inner tube, but consistent with that Silco track pump based on my testing this morning. So that seemed to be pretty good. So should we all rush out and buy some orange inner tubes for our bikes? Well, I'm not so sure. Firstly, it's expensive. You're looking at 42 pounds per inner tube or $50 or 45 euros. So very expensive compared to a normal inner tube, but quite a bit cheaper than the Quark TireWiz Bluetooth pressure sensor, which is 200 pounds, I think. So a lot cheaper than that, but more expensive than an inner tube and more expensive than your thumbs, depending on how well calibrated they are. The other downside is you don't get live readings from the smartphone app. So every time you inflate or deflate the tire, you have to scan again. It's not giving you live data from that chip inside there to your smartphone app. So that's a small flaw. It'd be great if you had your smartphone app on, it's reading the data and you inflate your tire using a track pump or hand pump and give you a live uh, data so you can see what your tire pressure is going up to or down to. So that's a bit of a flaw really. But perhaps the biggest downside is the fact it's currently only available on mountain bikes and I haven't used a inner tube on a mountain bike since the days of ghetto tubeless. Yeah, I've been using tubeless for, for donkey's years on mountain bikes. So that probably is the biggest reason this technology isn't for me in a mountain bike inner tube, because I don't use inner tubes on a mountain bike. But if you do use inner tubes on a mountain bike, I can't imagine there's many of you out there, then you might be uh, wanting to take a closer look. There's no talks of a gravel or road version of this technology, but I think the real opportunity is a road inner tube because as we know, lots of us still like to use inner tubes on road bikes where tubers is still sort of catching on uh, slowly. This in a road version would be a big seller. I think I think a lot of people would like this. So you get lightweight technology, claim to be more punch resistant than a normal inner tube and you get the pressure reading into your smartphone app. So I think a road version of this would be a lot more popular than a mountain bike version. But as a demonstration of the technology, well, is it a solution looking for a problem? Let me know what you think down below. Personally, I get excited by new tech like this, and I think there's a place in the future where all bikes will have this sort of technology integrated into tires or wheels or valve stems or have a, just in the way that a modern car knows when you've got a puncture or a flat tire, it will tell you, it'll flash up a warning to inflate your tires. This isn't the first demonstration of this technology either. There's a Quark Bluetooth tire pressure sensor, which is about 200 pounds a wheel, so that's quite an expensive option. And back in 2017, I remember being at Eurobike trade show down in Germany and Hutchinson um, tire manufacturer demonstrated a similar technology with a special valve stem that gave you a live 
pressure readings from a tubeless setup for road and mountain bike. But 2017 hasn't seen the light of day, probably never will. And Quark have demonstrated the uh, benefits of their system, which is basically the same idea. But the uptake on that has been slow, a bit more on the mountain bike side, less on the road and gravel. The price is a real barrier. This at least is a lot cheaper than that system. But the real limitation of this technology is the inner tube itself, I'm afraid. Personally, I'm all that tubeless, whether road, gravel or mountain bike. And I'm quite happy to leave the inner tubes in the history books. But this technology, this idea, this concept of live pressure data on your smartphone, because we all carry smartphones around with us, is um, a really exciting technology. But let me know what you think down below. Is it a goer? Is it a knower? <laughs> I'd love to know your thoughts on this. So let me know. I'll put links to this technology to the website down below. Go and check it out if you want. Fable now, as I said earlier, mountain bikes, no news of gravel or road versions yet, but hopefully that will be coming soon. Anyway, that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.